So welcome back everyone. I've been asked to share some funny stories. So I have had, um, I, I, I have had, I guess, what I consider to be a very a rich life, a lots of experiences. And when you have lots of experiences, uh, you usually have a lot of funny stories to talk about. So I'm going to share with you the story today of um, uh, the, first, the first time I got fired from a job. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it was the only time that I remember. Maybe there were more. I don't remember. I've had a lot of really bad jobs. So out of high school, didn't really know what to do and uh, didn't go to college. And so I got a job. A buddy of mine helped me get a job uh, at Warren Industries. Warren Industries uh, in Oregon, Portland, Oregon, uh, they make winches and hubs and stuff. And I, I was excited about this. And so what they did is, is uh, I got into the, into the area where they, uh, I, I guess, where they build everything and assemble everything. And I got onto um, a line building hubs. The hubs for Ford Rangers, the old automatic hubs, um, and this would have been in the in the I guess in the late '80s or so. And so there were four of us on this line, and it was a really good group of guys. And it was basically what it was: it was a big table, um, and there were four workstations, um, and we each had our own particular job. And what we had to do was to take these uh, hub housings and then install all of the guts, you know, the bearings and all that stuff. And, and when we were done, we, we went from an empty hub housing to a completed hub housing. They were boxed up and these were shipped directly to Ford uh, for manufacturing. So uh, as I said, there were four of us. We were all about the same age, young guys, and we really enjoyed one another. And, and it actually made a very tedious and and horrible factory job um, bearable because we, we enjoyed working together and we had we kind of had a good dynamic there. So we had a quota and we had to, there was a certain number that we had to meet that had been laid out by previous guys or whoever. And I, I believe it was like just over 800 hubs. You had to make this. And if you did a little bit more than that, then you know that was always good, but you didn't want to do less or you, you get a talking to by the man, Cliff, the foreman the evil foreman that sat in the, in the glass cubicle and staring at us all day long. And so uh, as we kind of uh, started to work really well together, we started getting really good at what we did. And we uh, started to exceed uh, this amount of hubs. And we were getting up to where we were doing like a thousand and then we did 1100 and then I think we did like 1200 hubs. And, and this was a big, this was like yeah, 15, 20, 25% higher than what was expected of us at the time. Well, uh, so what they did is that they came to us and they said, okay, so you guys obviously uh, can make hubs really fast. Uh, we're going to raise the quota. This made us really cross. And I guess all of us had a little bit of a, a chip on our shoulder about this. And it made us so mad um, that we came up with a plan. So the new quota, whatever it was, let's say it was 1200 or something like that. <laughs> every, every night we would come in and uh, at one under. So this really messes everything up and it, it's really bad for the, for, the, for the supervisor and all that because when, when the bean counters and, and the management look at this, all, they, they see you know, the red mark, this one hub line is, is coming in you know, underperforming by, by 1% or, or less. You know, maybe it's less than 1%, but it was just, <laughs> and it was hard for us to do. I mean, we had to make an effort. We had to pace ourselves and we kept a really close count. <laughs> Every night, we came in exactly one under. This made this, this made made management so mad. They would call us into the office and they would give us a lecture, and, and you know, we'd sit there and take it. And then they would pull us off the line, and then they would punish us by giving us the worst jobs in the entire factory. And and I would primarily get the worst ones. So you know what a starter solenoid is. So one of the worst jobs we had to do. This is what, how they would punish you. Is a, a solenoid, a starter solenoid. Go look it up online and see a picture. It's got two little copper deals that come off the end. Well, Warren uses these, these solenoids uh, for their wenches, but the problem is, is the ones that they order from the factory are about an eighth inch too long and they won't fit in the case. I don't know. So what they do, they actually have a guy, this is, your, this is the poor guy's job, where you gotta pull the solenoid out of the box and you have to take it this little, this little, like a bench grinder with these cutting wheels on it. You had to cut off like an eighth of an inch each side and then buff it so it would accept a thread. And it, was a, and it was a horrible job because all day long as you're cutting these things, the little hot, red hot uh, copper deals they get in your hair and your bur it was it was awful. So I was stuck on that. Can you imagine that? Cutting solenoids eight hours a day? Swing shift. And then so then the, some of the other jobs that they put the other guys on was uh, doing fastener kits. And you want to talk about crazy making. 
you're sitting there at this table and you got this little bag and it's like one, two, three, four washers and one, two, three, five nuts and you take it and you staple it. And I mean, it's, it's, it's soul killing. The other one, the fourth one that they would put us on was the pin press. So it was a, a bushing. It was this massive basket of pins and bushings. And you would take one bushing and you would put it in the machine and then you would take a pin and then you would put the pin on the top and then you would press the two buttons, you know, two buttons because you can't be trusted. You might squish your fingers. So two buttons and it would come down and press them together and you'd put it in the basket. Eight hours, swing shift. So yeah, so, so these, were, these were some of the things that they would, they would do to us. Finally, they would think, okay, they've learned their lesson. They're going to they're gonna get themselves back in order. Back on the, back on the line. We'd be really careful. We we come in one under. <laughs> it was, <laughs> you know. Here's the thing. I know. I know it was a childish thing to do, and we were, you know, 19, 20 years old at the time. But the thing. Here's the thing, is that had they not said anything to us, had had they just uh, said, hey, you know, we really appreciate you guys uh, putting in the extra effort, the extra productivity. You know, uh, uh, here's a uh, here's a Starbucks certificate or what? I don't think there was Starbucks. It, anyway, you get my point. The fact that they raised this quote and they made this thing mandatory uh, with no thank you, it rubbed us the wrong way. And so that's how we reta re retaliated uh, by doing this. And it was this back and forth thing until finally they got so exasperated with it that uh, they just laid us all off. So I, <clears throat> it wasn't exactly a firing, um, but I think it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was my story of uh, getting back at the man in the factory. And would I do that now? No, I wouldn't do that now. It's, uh, you know, some, I'd be thankful to have a good job. Uh, so, uh, but I thought I'd share that with you because it was a kind of funny story. So, yeah. So if you're an employee, employer, um, take care of your guys, re treat them with respect, um, and uh, it, it'll come back to you. It's, uh, well, that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video. Sweet loaf. Did you get a bath? You look so clean. What are you having? What's, what's your breakfast here? Do you want more? Do you want more? More. Always more. No one eats like this one right here. She's got a tapeworm or something. No tapeworm. Just a huge appetite. Shoveling it in. More.